Obviously, he's trying to pretend that he's got a tattoo. I poked a hole in it. And then he must have felt like Twitter was coming down around him because everyone was laughing about it. And then he started sending me private messages. And I don't see the point in sending me private messages because there's nothing that you're going to say to me in the DM that I wouldn't say to you in, in a public tweet. Right. So, you know, come on, you're, you're a rapper. Where are your bars? Like, his banter was terrible. He had nothing to come back at me with. So I was just... I was back and forth in him like I would with a troll that's that's entertained me for, me for the afternoon. And he, he he got very offended by it. So, I mean, the thing is, I, I don't think he, I, I don't know as he think, I think he thinks I'm just going to sit on the outside and say nothing. But I know people have contacted his management about getting a boxing match between us. So if you don't think I'll back it up, then he's a fool. Um, I, I'm quite happy to fight Tyron Woodley under whatever rules he wants. I mean, you know, if he shows up, if he shows up even twice as, he, as, as, as good as he did against Jake Paul, I'm stopping him in two rounds. He just doesn't have the work rate anymore. He doesn't have the confidence to go anymore. And I get it. You know, it does pass you by. But at the point when, when I mean, <laughs> I'm probably sounding a bit hypocritical here because people are going to say the same thing. It's been nearly 10 years since I fought. But in my head, I'm never going to retire. Like you speak to Conan Silveira, he's never going to retire. Ensign in a way, that guy will never retire. You know, it's, it's the same, it's but yes, mentality. We're martial artists <laughs> and we're always ready, right? Right. So I'm always happy to fight, whether it's now or when I'm 65. If there's an argument between me and somebody else, I'm always going to back it up. Even if I think I'm going to get my ass kicked, I'll still step in there and uh, and give it my best account. Um, but, you know, who doesn't love fighting? I love fighting. I'm back in, uh, back in training camp now and I've, I'm getting my medicals done. So... I'm looking at what offers are on the table, and if one of them's got Tyron Woodley's name on it, then I'd be more than keen to sign it. Absolutely taking one of the uh, the Jake Paul approach, as I would say, creating some sort of hit list for everyone. Yeah, that's right. And he kind of spread himself around, right? I mean, he touched on a 25-pounder. He brought the 35-pounders. It looks like he's going 45. I mean, look, if you're in Dana White's position, and maybe even like the idea, but in all fairness, some things have to come in order. Henry, let's get you back in the pool. Let's check the landscape when and if you are cleared and brought in. And then Dana's going to have to ask him a question, which is simply, Henry, 
what weight class are you going for? Because I, I would predict for you, if it's just this champ, champ, champ business, that would be amazing if Henry pulled that off. But I don't know that he'll be given the opportunity, right? Dana's not playing uh, checkers. He's playing chess, and he needs multiple moves. He needs a guy that's going to come back two and three times. He might ask Henry, and be very reasonable if Dana did, ask Henry, prove yourself. Come out here, have a number one contender's bout. Let's see how you look. Ring rust is real. You've never been in this division. Of course, I'm speaking of featherweight. If he is going up there and going after Volkanovski, I think there's a lot of moving parts. But Henry, for now, controlling what he can, getting a conversation going, look, he's doing everything right. What's up, everybody? Triple C here, long my partner, future rising star in mixed martial arts, Victoria Anthony. Two-time world team member, two-time junior world champion. And this girl is uh, she's second to none off the inside trip. So today, I would like to go over that inside trip with her. So I'm gonna go to uh, do it and demonstrate off of the inside, uh, off of the inside wrist control to the inside trip. And that's she's gonna go. You guys ready? Control the time, grab the wrist, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna invest in the inside trip to that side that I pulled. And then it's off the open. We're having the, we gotta have the right, this is what I pulled. I gotta go. I gotta go. Notice that I'm slamming this down like so. It feels good, man. I, uh, you know, I had a surgery on my knee in January. And then, you know, that was, you know, a, a, a little longer uh, rehab process than I originally thought. And then obviously getting hurt this last camp, um, it was kind of a bummer. You know, I was just telling them in there, it's just like, it's hard to say you want to pull out of a fight, but I just did it because I believe in, in and now I, I truly believe it was the smartest thing for me to do. Um, but uh, I feel good and I feel much better this time around and uh, I'm ready to get after it. But, uh, you know, I had some other, you know, outside influences to tell me and, and help guide me in that direction. And that's, you know, that's the good part about having a good team around you. Um, you know, as the as a competitor, as, as, as a prideful guy, it, it's hard to say that you're going to pull out of a fight because of an injury. Um, and obviously nobody ever knows how hurt you are except you. Right. It, this is a pretty a decently high profile fight, but I think if it was higher stakes, people would have criticized it more. Um, but dude, it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with people, bro. Like they're so like, it, it's lose, lose, bro. No matter what you do, somebody's gonna hate on it, bro. You could be like, I just donated to this homeless foundation and people are like, oh, why'd you have to make a post about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it doesn't matter what you say, bro. People can hate on it. It's crazy. It's, it's so bizarre.